Aries. But up first tonight, protesters gather outside the unfinished former landmark hotel site, calling the tax breaks the developer is receiving unfair. Live from the area's most experienced news team, this is NBC 29 News at 10. Thanks for joining us tonight. The former Landmark Hotel is back at the center of an upset in Charlottesville. A city man running for council staged a protest outside the derelict hotel, saying that the current city council's priorities are in the wrong place. NBC 29's Nora News joins us live in our Charlottesville newsroom with the details. Nora. Hey there, Henry. Well, independent candidate Paul Long today said that city council should be prioritizing social programs instead of offering tax credits and tax programs for businesses like the Landmark Hotel. Mayor Mike Signer says he can do both. On a rainy afternoon on Charlottesville's downtown mall, a few waterlogged protesters proudly displayed signs. We're protesting the decision of city council to give John Dewberry, who's the developer of the Landmark Hotel, a million dollars in tax breaks so he can complete this. Long and his supporters say that decision shows that city council is friendly to big business at a cost. We think that that's unfair that business people who are owning barber shops and small businesses very likely going to have to struggle to stay in business. Supporters said council should prioritize spending money on city schools, affordable housing, and ending homelessness instead. There's so many things that could be done with a million dollars for the homeless. It's actually more expensive for a person to remain on the streets than it is to provide housing. But the city is not giving money to Dewberry. The tax breaks are a reduction in future taxes the hotel would pay, money that would not exist if the hotel is not finished. The city council has also doubled its commitment to the Charlottesville Affordable Housing Fund, increased funding to city schools, and increased contributions to city nonprofits. In a statement, Mayor Mike Signer said that, quote, assertions that this council has prioritized business interests above others are dead wrong, and noted that even with the tax breaks, the new Dewberry Hotel would provide about $8 million of revenue. Now, regardless of today's protest, City Council has already approved this measure 4-1 to one in a vote back in March. That whole project will cost about $50 million. Nora News live in our Charlottesville newsroom tonight. Nora, thank you. All right, let's go over some weather information for you, such as current temperatures. Hey, it's not an issue up here. It's How about uh, 48 degrees in Charlottesville, 51 in Green in the Valley in Stanton? It's 45 degrees in Waynesboro, 48. Wintergreen, 40 degrees. But no doubt about it, it's been raining on and off throughout the day today. And what have our automated rain gauges say? Well, 1.5 inches in Charlottesville, almost an inch and three quarters in Waynesboro. About three quarters of an inch in Harrisonburg and about a half an inch in Page. And yes, there's still a little bit of rain falling across the region. It's going to continue through the overnight hours and throughout most of the day tomorrow. So you could pick up maybe another inch, inch and a half of rain before all is said and done. This moisture feed is going to continue for about the next 24 hours or so. We do expect things to clear up by Wednesday and then starts to warm up after that. Briefly, your weather forecast for tonight. Near 100% chance of more rain, cloudy skies. Breezes will be out of north about 10 miles an hour. Overnight lows in the upper 40s in the valley to around 50 degrees in central Virginia. And Henry, if you come back in a few months, I'll show you that seven-day forecast. All right, Norm, thank you very much. Have that umbrella handy for tomorrow. A Charlottesville man is guilty of a fatal crash that took the life of a mother, sending her son off to the University of Virginia. Today, the 75-year-old man was before a judge in Albemarle Circuit Court. The judge found Franklin Ryder guilty of reckless driving. Bonnie Baja died as a result of that accident near the shop's stone field last August. An assistant Commonwealth's attorney says Ryder will be back in court in May. That's when they'll decide if Ryder's license to drive will be suspended or revoked. In the meantime, Ryder will be retested by the Department of Motor Vehicles. A Harrisonburg man is now behind bars charged in connection with a shooting last week in the 400 block of Pheasant Run Circle. 22-year-old Moses Raglan was arrested yesterday during a traffic stop in the early morning hours. Raglan is currently facing charges of attempted malicious wounding and a slew of firearms charges. He's being held without bond at Rockingham Regional Jail. An Albemarle County Rescue Station is about to get an expensive facelift. Construction is underway at Rescue Station 8 on Burkmar Drive. The building and parking lot will be expanding to make room for larger ambulances. Modern mechanical systems will also be put in place. The $945,000 project will make sure the crew is working in updated and comfortable conditions.
Our crews spend 24-hour shifts there, so it's almost as if it's their, their home away from home. Uh, they eat, uh, sleep, work out, uh, everything goes on there, uh, cook their meals and stuff, and so uh, it's important to give uh, our employees a place to, uh, to work that's, that's comfortable and that they can do their job. The station runs more than 2,500 calls a year. The project is set to wrap up by this October. Former President George H.W. Bush may leave a Houston hospital by the end of the week. Bush 41, as he's known, is recovering from what his spokesperson last week called a mild case of pneumonia. The 92-year-old former president is resting at Houston Methodist Hospital, where he'll stay for a few more days for observation. Mr. Bush's medical team hopes to discharge him by the end of the week. Former President Barack Obama made his first public appearance of his post-presidency on Monday, speaking at an event in his hometown of Chicago. It ends a three-month period of relative silence since Obama left office. Andy Rose has the details on the former president's speech. So, uh, what's, what's been going on while I've been gone? In his first public speaking event since leaving office, former President Barack Obama was noticeably calmer and more relaxed, proving that post-White House life has been good to him. During a 90-minute forum at the University of Chicago, where he used to teach, Obama focused on one of his favorite subjects, civic engagement, and what comes next for him. The single most important thing I can do is to help in any way I can prepare the next generation of leadership to take up the baton uh, and to take their own crack at changing the world. And while Obama stayed away from criticizing his successor or talking about his signature health care reform, he wasn't shy about bringing up one hot topic that invigorates Trump's supporters and roils his critics. These are overwhelmingly families who are just looking for a better life for their children. And, uh, you know, I, I always used to say sometimes in crowds that where folks didn't want to hear it that uh, it's not like everybody in Ellis Island had all their papers straight. Uh, you, you know, uh, the truth is the history of our immigration system has always been a little bit haphazard. I'm Andy Rose reporting. The June primaries are right around the corner and Charlottesville voters have some elected spots to fill. The primary will determine the nominees of the Democratic and Republican parties for state and local races in November. Charlottesville's voting equipment went through the final testing and was sealed today. City officials are encouraging Charlottesville voters to do research, though, before picking up a ballot. People should do their homework and, and study who these candidates are. Um, what their different views are, so they're making an accurate and informed choice that's important, and to vote. In absence, in person absentee voting begins statewide this Friday, April 28th, and runs through June 10th. Spots on the ballot include Virginia's governor, lieutenant governor, the 57th district for the House, and Charlottesville City Council. Today, a panel studying Virginia political ethics issues took up some thorny questions about potential gift restrictions. In recent years, the General Assembly approved an annual $100 cap on gifts from lobbyists to public officials. The Virginia Conflict of Interest and Ethics Advisory Council talked about the lack of any limit on contributions by political action committees, also known as PACs. Right now, PACs function as an organization to help elect candidates. Some members of the council are concerned this can be exploited to get around that lobbying gift cap. And we hear a lot of talk that this focus is on members of the General Assembly. This goes down to school board members, board of supervisors, city council, town councils. Uh, it is very, very pervasive, and I think it's important that we try to simplify it. Some members of the panel feel like a comprehensive rewrite of the ethics laws is needed because of its complexity. The city of Charlottesville is proud, is a proud recipient of the Souls Smart Bronze Award. The honor recognizes Charlottesville's efforts to go solar and the work it does to encourage home and business owners to do the same. The city is also now a home to a renewable energy alliance. Charlottesville is the first Virginia locality to receive a Soul Smart designation. 
Today, the fifth largest employer in Charlottesville says it has contributed more than $400 million to the local economy by working sustainably. CFA Institute company leaders presented a study at City Space this morning to show the overall impact it provides the city and surrounding counties. CFA recycles water, uses solar panels, and is a gold lead building, which is a green building recognition. The study was conducted by the Weldon Cooper Center for Public Service at UVA. In Waynesboro, city leaders are proposing a tax increase, and tonight they heard from their constituents. City council chambers were packed tonight for a public hearing on the tax rate. On the table are two options, a seven-cent real estate tax increase with the majority covering the cost of the high school renovation, but also a nine-cent tax increase, which would bring the city's real estate tax rate to 89 cents. It's going to cause the rents to go up. I have families that you raise even a slight amount and they cannot afford it. Now, as a business owner, you're going to give me no choice if you raise the, pri the price of uh, taxes. Our city has been way too focused on keeping a tax rate low and not focused enough on serving a city and the needs of a city. And I think we're behind in education and police and other things. Council will vote on the two proposed tax rates during their next meeting in May. A Greene County nonprofit is making sure students, faculty, and staff stay safe in the event of an active shooter situation at county schools. The Public Safety Foundation of Greene County provided funds for security blinds to be installed at every school in the county. These are custom made security blinds or blackout drapes made so that an active shooter could not see through the classroom door. They are built with weights inside so that the bottom part doesn't roll back up. Statistically, it's proven that if any active shooter came through and could not see into a classroom, the tendency would be that that shooter would move on and out of the building because they would not be able to see anything inside of a classroom. The foundation awarded more than $6,500 to fund those blinds. The money comes from donations, grants, and fundraising efforts. Dozens gather on grounds to discuss how race may sometimes play a role in environmental issues in the United States. Plus, the School of Law at the University of Virginia is preparing to unveil a digital version of Thomas Jefferson's collection of law books.